So could you just go with diad uh, diadal ang uh, angles again? Because yeah. you just said that uh, already you have four different different you know carbon and oxygen atoms, and uh, you talk about their positions being arranged in a certain way. That's how you describe whether this angle is going to be phi, whether this angle is going to be psi, or whether this angle is going to be omega. Right. So there are definitions of these angles which you need to understand. Four atoms mm -hmm. in space, mm -hmm. right? A triangle is, uh, sorry, an angle is usually three atoms in space. Okay. Yes, so you have to remember a dihedral or a torsion angle needs four atoms in space, and you can take coordinates of any structure and you can calculate phi and psi for them. Okay. Similarly, just, so, yeah. So, so uh, like these four angles could be these four atoms could be any random four atoms now, continue uh, like in a continuous sequence in the yes. polypeptide. So every each dot over here, each mm -hmm. dot you see over here, for example, represents one uh, one peptide. So basically, it is one unit, one phi, one psi, right next to each other. Oh, okay. So the next phi psi will be plotted uh, separately. Next phi psi would be plotted uh, plotted separately. So each dot over here represents one amino acid. Is the way to look at it. Okay. And uh, could we say that all those all these two D maps are basic of all those three D structures we saw? You know, before like uh, in the previous slides, you saw the different three D structures. Could we right. say like that? So. There are over 10,000 structures, uh, let's say in the protein data bank. I don't have the correct number. There are probably many more. And this represents, this is a modern picture. It represents, God knows, 100,000, 200,000 atoms. There are lots of dots over here. So they represent all the structures, all till date, in terms of their phi and psi. And it tells you that phi and psi cluster only around three major regions, the alpha region, the beta region, and this is the... Uh, Left-handed helix is it? Left-handed helix region. And the reason it turns out, you can model this. In today's day and age, we model it using energy calculations. But in the 1960s, when GNR did it, he used plastic models and he would have used a hard sphere approximation. He gave a certain radius to each atom, which is shown over here. And he built physical models. And then he turned these models around the torsion angles. Because phi and psi were the only two things which could be, uh, which could be rotated. Omega could not be changed. It was at 180 degree. And of course, the side chains, depending on how big or small they were, uh, were also important. But it turned out for secondary structure, the phi and psi were the main critical parameters, the rotation of the phi and psi. Okay. Thank you. So why omega was fixed as 180 degree? Because the... This particular combination of atoms uh, over here, here, I'm going to show you, is basically this group. Okay, this particular variant is basically partial double bond in character. And because of this partial double bond, the electrons freely roam between these four atoms, which makes it very rigid. And this partial double bond doesn't allow rotation around the CN bond over here. Uh, so what was the reason for the restrictions in that plot? Please, can you again explain? So are you asking me why is there a lot of space over here? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll try and give you an idea over here. Let us just take, uh, this is an analogy, okay? So let's say, say that this is a tree, okay? And this is another large tree. And let's put this as a bush, a small bush. Now, if you rotate this particular, consider this is the main chain of an amino acid. And if you rotate uh, things around this main chain, this rotation and this rotation, at some point, this tree and this tree are going to come close to each other and they are going to hit each other. Whenever they come to close each other, uh, come close, come close to each other, Energy wise, they will repel each other. And in terms of physical space that they occupy, they'll hit each other. Okay. If you rotate this blue around from zero to 360 degrees. Fine. Now it turns out when Ramachandran modeled polypeptide structure using simple idea of large atoms. So remember, if this is a phenylalanine residue, it is very large. And if you rotate it, and if this is, let us say, a, a proline. This is going to come and hit the side chain. And whenever there is physical proximity or physical contact, 
this is energetically energetically very unfavorable so all these regions over here are regions where the fascia angles are not possible because of clashes between the side chain okay sir thank you uh, excuse me sir yeah Uh, yeah in this map only uh, does each dot represent a molecule uh, with a certain psi value and a certain pi value no each dot represents so for a 100 let me try and uh, explain this to you it's good you are asking questions i realize it takes time to get this concept if this is a ramachandra map okay which you and i are drawing let us say for one protein which we take from the pdb let's say it has a pdb id of id of 3 X Y Z. We know that this protein has hundred amino acids in a linear sequence, and it is folded into a state. The folded state has been captured by X-ray crystallography, and we have a file with with uh, coordinates in space because it will have ninety nine uh, unit. It will have ninety nine pairs of phi and psi. Is that clear enough? Yes, sir. Sir. Yeah. But even if we do have a two D map of the proteins, we still need more information like what the nuclear, what the amino acid is, and what the order it is in. So, what's the big deal of uh, this Ramachandran map? So, the big deal. Uh, so, when initially it came out, it was a nice representation of proteins. Okay, so it was nice. People commented on it. Uh, it wasn't a Nature paper. Uh, it was published in Journal of Molecular Biology. Then. as we started getting more and more structures in the 70s 80s there came a time when every day there were about 10 to 20 structures deposited in the protein data bank and this ramped up dramatically in the 90s uh, and in in 2000 now the people who were managing the protein data bank they were overwhelmed with this large number of structures and they realized that many of these structures were wrong either the solution was wrong or there was something uh, somebody was basically not some of these structures were uh, were falsified uh, uh, th th that also happened in a uh, small fraction of cases now it turned out if you take these took these coordinates which were submitted by let us say a group in harvard and you drew a ramachandra plot and you got dots over here you knew that the uh, protein structure was wrong it was as simple as that so it became very popular in the 80s and the 90s as a quick way of clearly defining whether the protein structure which was solved was correct or not so it became a quality control check a fisi map and that is one of the reasons it became extremely popular uh, at the end of the last century does that answer your question yes sir yes sir it does it makes a lot of sense yeah sir yeah sir can you show the hard sphere approximation slide So the best way to appreciate the hard sphere approximation is to, in fact, look at this picture. Okay. Um, sir, sir uh, I had a doubt. Yeah. So why is the size of oxygen greater than that of nitrogen? Okay. I just here? copied this from from somewhere. Uh, I, these are not the correct sizes. So maybe I should very specifically say that these are not the correct sizes. Okay. Okay, sir. This just to give you an idea. Look at this. This is a CH three group. okay now there will be a c alpha over here and let us just imagine a a ch3 group over here also okay so when you rotate around cn at some point this ch3 group and the ch3 group on top will come close to each other and this will not be allowed so when you take the correct hard sphere approximations physically these two side chains will knock into each other and since uh, this is disallowed in in space this will represent the blank regions on the fire size space i have a doubt uh, that is uh, am i right in saying that the g n ramachandran plot of different uh, rather uh, proteins will be different it will be different in the sense that it will have different dots but what we have learned from the last the distribution of the dots will be different distribution of the dots will be different but all of these structures will have alpha lysis and beta sheets so they will all be crowding this area of space okay so for different proteins the graph will be same or different uh, well the dots will be slightly different but they'll all crowd over here it is like vt station over here right so you cannot look at a pattern of dots 
and say, oh, this must be this protein. That is not possible. But if you have a coordinates of atoms in space and you build a picture using ribbons or any of the different techniques, you will be able to identify the protein based on the sequence and on the structure. Uh, sir? Yeah. So if uh, different amino acids land in beta region and alpha region, how do we finally determine that uh, which structure the protein is? We just plot the... So the solution of the structure comes from X-ray crystallography, right? And when we plot it, we will get structures like this. So Ramachandra map comes downstream of a structure as of today. When Ramachandran first started making the map, he was building models. But what we are seeing are not models. They are actual atomic level protein structures. Uh, so how do we measure psi and pi angles? We measure psi and pi angles by looking at the coordinates of these four main chain atoms in space. It will give us four dots in space, dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four. And then using these four dots, we will basically measure this as the pi angle or the psi angle. So if I look at it from this direction, it will be something like this with the bond hidden over here. And if this is 36 degrees, that is the angle phi. 